Hey everyone, so this is just a quick tutorial on how to use Notion.so, which I talked about uh, for using my online grimoire and someone asked if I could do a tutorial, so this is going to be that. And I figured since I'm going to be showing how to use it for an online grimoire anyways, might as well show you also how you can use it to form your own correspondences which is um, one of the things that I think it's the most practical for and uh, one of the main things that I end up using it for. So this method is useful for any type of reconstructionist witchcraft, especially if you're using local folklore, um, but you could apply it to any type of craft, really. Uh, for example, pop culture witchcraft, if you're for forming your lore from pop culture sources, um, really anything that's gonna be using multiple sources or even if you're not using any sources at all and you just kind of want to write down your own associations and make sure that they remain consistent, uh, it's a really good method for that. You could also use it for, for example, dream work to determine symbology, significance in your dreams um, just by writing down your dreams and taking note of the common elements in a separate document. Um, all right, so first of all, obviously, you want to go to the website, which is notion.so. So I'm just going to put... Uh, tutorial video for the name okay, and tutorial I'll delete this afterwards anyway so it doesn't really matter and create a workspace I know a lot of you already have a bunch of stuff already in Google Docs and a lot of you also mentioned um, using Evernote so if you do use either of those things you can just import them and it'll actually keep some of the formatting as well. For now though, I'm just gonna keep it blank and skip this step. You can get the iOS version, you can get an actual desktop app. I just use the web version because I'm lazy, so I'm just gonna click done here. I'm just gonna kind of go over how I would, how I kind of set up mine, and then, you know, obviously you can do it however you want. So this would be, for example, your Glamour name. And this would be your main page here. You can add a cover picture from any type of emojis to, let's say I want a, it to be a little book. Then I can use like this, for example, or this one. Where it gets fun is when you start adding pages. So I'm going to add, let's say, a DreamWorks section here. And inside the DreamWorks section, I'm going to put journals. I'm going to put another one for analysis. And I'm going to put another one for references. And you would obviously be able to change all of these icons if you like. But the cool thing is, so if I go to DreamWorks, it automatically puts these links here. And if I had changed these icons, then it would automatically put them here as well. Any sub pages you have will automatically go into this section. You can have, let's say, I want to put a subheader that has projects. And here I would list various projects. Let's say Patreon page, correspondences list. And you can highlight this and say, well, I actually would like this to be, you know, in like a column here. So then you'll have your links here and your projects thing here. You can format the text if you want to format the text. Let's say you could put it pink. And then I also want it to have like a blue background. There you go. So if you want to get into a little bit more as to how you can actually use this to organize the grimoire to your advantage. Um, so for example, let's say journals. I would create a page in here that would be, let's say, dated today, 24 July 2018. And then I could, for example, embed an actual video just by scrolling down here to the media section, clicking on video. And then you can paste your video link, embed the video. All right, so how does this help you make correspondences? Let's go into the analysis subsection. Let's say I have a page called Wolves. And in here, I would basically be able to refer to any dreams that I had regarding wolves. So 24 July 2018, and it actually calls up page that you want. You could have also put it just at the date if you wanted to, but I actually do want it to link to this particular page. 
because that way if I click on it, boom, go back to the page. So let's go back to the wolves here and let's say you also had a dream about it on, I don't know, the 18th of August. And then you could have a subsection, similarities, a second where you have differences, you know, basically what are you inferring from the similarities and differences as to what the symbology or the symbolism of wolves would be for you and basically comparing the consistencies and kind of getting a, a conclusion out of that. So that's um, how you could do it. And you could do this for any type of correspondences. So I just did the example here for dream work, but you could do it for, um, let's say if you're using local lore to figure out what the different correspondences or uses of certain plants would be. And you would be able to say, well, apples are always used when in, uh, for example, love spells, or they often come about in relationships, um, things related to relationships and things like that. So that's just how you can kind of set it up to figure out your correspondences and whatever. So just to give you an idea, like kind of what my grimoire looks like and how it's organized. For example, I have uh, my bestiary where I keep any lore about kind of local legends, cryptids, monsters, whatever. Divination, I have it sorted into different subcategories. I have a different section for folk related methods of divination. So using, for example, apples, using matches, tarot, I actually pretty much just have one for a bunch of different spreads that I like to keep handy. Uh, I don't really have much in the way of fauna right now, but I have a little bit more in terms of flora. Uh, I have my protocols on how you can collect the plants that you want to use, and then I have it subdivided into, you know, berry plants, shrubs, ingredients master list. Anytime I use an ingredient inside of a spell, I list the ingredient in the master list and then I put a tag as to what the purpose of the ingredient was in that spell and a link to the actual spell. So for example, a uh, flower in this one instance was used for prosperity. They tried to keep track of all the different uses that, it, that they have in different spells and in different techniques, things like that. Uh, this is, for example, one way that you can have a section set up. I have this actually for any plants that I'm using, also for fauna. So alternate names, just general information, different ways that you can identify it. This isn't filled out yet, obviously. You could also include a photo of the plant and have that on the same page. Uh, I separate uses into mundane, medicinal, and arcane, so you can fill that out correspondingly, and this is just like a super easy quick guide reference type thing that you can constantly use. And I have a section on numbers. Basically what I do for the ingredients, I do the same thing for numbers just by, you know, any kind of associations that numbers show up with. I put keywords for those and then a link, and then you can have spells, techniques, uh, references. Any references that I use really frequently, I keep on this main page here so that I can just go back to it whenever. These are links to the PDF files that I have on my drive. Anything that I want to read, I make a listing of here and I kind of sort them by topic. And then I have also unsorted reading notes. I will create a page just with the title of that book and basically anything that I find interesting or that I come across while I'm reading that I just want to keep a note of without necessarily having to go through the trouble of organizing it and formatting it, I'll put it in this page because that way I can always search for it really easily. There is a search function up here where you can use the quick find tool. So for example, if I wanted to figure out where did I write notes about Virgin Mary, I would be able to type Virgin Mary into quick finds and this page would come up because it has Virgin Mary right here. So these are just some of the ways that you can set up a digital grimoire. Obviously that should be super personal to how you use it. So yeah, hopefully this is uh, helpful for you to create your own grimoire. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, whatever. You can reach me at chaoskayan.tumblr.com. There'll be a link in the description. You can always send me an email chaoskayan at gmail.com. All right, have an awesome week, guys. Bye.